be here with you and to share with you some insights and inspirations from my very humble story. So I'm coming from Oman, and for those who doesn't know much about Oman, Oman is the country of courage, wisdom, and rich culture. Oman is located in the southeastern quarter of the Arabian Peninsula, and it covers a land area of 309,500 square kilometers. The capital city is Masqat, the beautiful Masqat. And the population of Oman is 4.6 million. And 29% of that population is youth. So back to my story, I started my career in Information Technology Authority, which is the authority responsible for the e-government transform transformation in Oman. Then I moved to the Research Council, which is the R&D arm of the government of Oman. Then I moved uh, to Oman Technology Fund, which is a company that invests in tech startups. So back to my beginning in ITA, I started as a webmaster, then I moved to the government licensing agreement for the whole government of Oman. Then I worked a bit in marketing and in project management. I went for my higher studies in Singapore. I came back, I handled the incubation program, and I worked a couple of years on developing the strategy framework for the program and the execution plan. In uh, January 2013, His Majesty uh, Sultan Qaboos bin Saeed, the Sultan of Oman, highlighted the importance of SMEs. He said, the national economy of a country is in fact based on small and medium industries. These are the fundamentals and the foundation of all national economies. Since then, the entrepreneurial scene in Oman started to revive. And I'm using the word revive because Omanis are known to be entrepreneurs since ever in history. So uh, one and a half months after the statement of His Majesty, I integrated SAS Center for Entrepreneurship. It was the first ICT incubation center in Oman. It was a state of art and a quantum leap in incubation concept in Oman. I spent days and night working on developing this concept and I worked very closely with the interior designers, and I bought each and every piece of furniture myself. So, as a collective effort since 2013 to 2017, as you can see, this is the growth of SMEs in Oman uh, for the past five years. And as collective effort for not only SAS, but certain organizations who, who are working to nurture and support the SME ecosystem in Oman. Oman was ranked last year uh, as a third Arabian country in the Entrepreneurship Index and number 33 in uh, over 137 countries uh, in the same index as well. So, you know, I like working with startups. It's so demanding, but it's very fun and enjoyable. But it wasn't easy at all. The moment I handled this project, uh, many people tried to exclude me and tell, keep, keeps in telling me how disqualified I am and how incapable I am. But you know what? Here where I learned not to listen to them and to focus, stay focused on my goals and just work hard and give it all what it takes. So the lesson that I want to share with you uh, from this experience is that please don't underestimate your ability to make a difference no matter what people tell you. Words and ideas can change the world. In 2015, I decided to move to the Research Council. It wasn't an easy um, decision for me. I was so attached to the center. It, it was my baby. And I was in love with people, with furniture, with cleaners, everybody. So, but it was a moment to move. And I decided to take up, you know, another challenge. So I moved to the Research Council. Uh, allow me to give you a very quick glance on the innovation scene in Oman. Currently, Oman is included among the inefficient performer in innovation. Last year, we ranked number 77 in the Innovation Index. The year before, it was 74. The year before, it was 69. So as you can see, we are getting behind in innovation. So what we did, we developed our own national innovation strategy. 70 experts from Oman 
from government to private to academia worked hard on that uh, strategy and got it approved by the uh, cabinet of ministers in Oman and the execution already started. So if the Sultanate remain the level of uh, two point increase annually, Oman would be among the leading countries within the, the next 25 years. So back to what I did when I moved to the research council, I was headhunted. So I prepared a very excellent presentation for His Excellency, the Secretary General of the Research Council. And by the way, at that time, it was the peak of the financial crisis in Oman. So, you know, I had to show my muscles to the guy and show him that I'm really good and it was a really good investment in me. So uh, I gave him my presentation. He liked it, he thanked me and he looked at my eyes and he said, seriously, you want me to go back to the Minister of Finance and tell him, please stop up our budget with 500,000 Oman Riyal, which is equivalent to almost 1 million euro, because Maha wants to do her incubation program. I don't have budget. Please go and bring me back alternatives. I thanked him, I went out of the office, and I was like, if they don't have money, why they hired me? And what am I supposed to do now? So I went back to my office, my Mission Impossible started, and I changed the whole model. I uh, developed a new implementation plan. I utilized my network, which was the key thing. And I utilized my engagement with the entrepreneurial ecosystem in Oman, and I started to build strategic relationship with some organization who are still supporting the program till now. So the lesson, one of the lessons that I learned from that experience is that networking works. And effective networking is not a result of luck. It requires hard work, persistence, and genuine intentions. And you will be surprised with the results you would achieve. Moving on, I spent a couple of years in the research council, and then I was headhunted once again, this time by Oman Technology Fund. And another mission is possible started. I left the TRC 30th September 2017, and I joined OTF October 1st, 2017. So the, the day I joined the Oman Technology Fund, we announced our first and only cohort. Uh, it's the first uh, pre-seed investment program in Oman. Imagine, it was the first day uh, at work for me in a new company, and I had to launch a program, and I have to set, I mean, manage the expectation of my board, of my CEO, of the press, of the social media, of the whole country. What's going on? So I was putting the timeline for the cohort, and I was laughing because I was telling myself how on earth I'm going to get, you know, uh, achieve these deadlines. But we did it. And this is uh, the first cohort of Tequil. You can see, uh, well, we did this miracle in collaboration and assistance with our good friends from the NDRC. You can see Gary and David, happy, smiling. And you can see that 50% of my cohort was female, which was amazing. So in two and a half months, we had selected 10 investments, uh, 10 startups, and we started our boot camp. And two weeks later, we started uh, our first cohort. And to just keep the finger on the pulse of the uh, MENA region startup, 2017 was an excellent year of funding. 650 million US dollars were spent on two, 270 deals. And by the activation of Tequeen, uh, we managed to lead for a significant jump for Oman in the number of investments been uh, done compared to 2016. So it was uh, amazing to touch and feel the result of what we did so immediately. And it was such a great honor to be part of, you know, enhancing the, um, uh, the ranking of the country. And we got four points in uh, market, in, in, in market uh, ranked by investment. So, um, my lesson learned from the, what we did in a two and a half month is leadership is not about designations or titles, it's about impact and influence and inspiration because impact involves getting results. 
and influence is about spreading the passion you have you know, uh, to your work and by it you will inspire your surroundings. Last month I was recognized uh, for all my contribution in the World Telecommunication and Information Society Day uh, since I started my career and I really appreciated that moment and what I appreciate more is the second half of the photo uh, the appreciation that I get from my startups and my colleagues and my friends and, of course, my family. But you know what? The journey was not easy at all. Um, at one hand, there were lots of blessings and gifts from God. And at the other hand, there were lots of difficult moments which needed exceptional strength to go through. Maybe the most difficult one was when I lost my mom just a few weeks before the inauguration of SAS and I lost her suddenly. So the timing was very critical and the grief was so huge, but I did it for her because she was my inspiration. She taught me all what I know, although she was illiterate. So I thought this is what she would expect me to do and I did it for her. So um, this is my story in a nutshell. Thank you very much for listening. And my last message, my last message to you is that please don't wait for inspiration. Be the inspiration because the word only changed from within. Thank you very much.